This is from an essay titled, uh, Walking into the Ring of Fire. I had opened an evening's eco-storytelling show at the Kilauea Theater, high up in the cool clouds covering the volcano, with a spontaneous invocation. I pledge devotion to Madame Pele and Kilauea Volcano, wherein she dwells, one everlasting fire creating lava and new land for all. It was pointedly intended as a more fitting tribute to the place than the United States Pledge of Allegiance, even if I was an inexperienced, albeit respectful outsider. Acknowledging Pele, the potent goddess who Native Hawaiians believe makes her home within their volcanoes, might have seemed presumptuous by a visitor, but it became thoroughly appropriate the next morning when fresh flows from the volcano were reported to be streaming into the Pacific. I felt summoned by the place itself to be a witness to this quintessential land-forming event and headed for the coast near Kalapana as quickly as I could. There was a steam plume with a junk sculpture of twisted rusty steel girders remaining from a former park visitor's center that had been obliterated by heavy flows only a month before. It created a bombarded World War II beach effect heightened by some shattered and half toppled palm trees that were still smoking only a few yards from the pathetically inadequate park structure stood a native temple site constructed of uncemented, tightly fitted volcanic stones that was several hundred years old and survived because lava had flowed around it rather than over it. Why it had been spared seemed both obvious and pretentious. Paradoxically, a park ranger stood in the distinctly non-human setting further down where lava slowly pooled before running under a heaped earlier flow and then oozing into the ocean. Thick pluming steam billowed behind him, emitting, emitting muffled booms that resembled distant artillery fire. I looked to see what he wore on his feet and gladly noted they were conventional leather hiking boots with pressed rubber soles which meant my shoes would last after all. Closer proximity to the steam cloud clarified why there had been small stinging sensations on my face and arms during the walk out. Wisps of sulfurous smelling steam were occasionally blown back in shore and the burly lobster skinned white haired ranger would wave a hand in front of his nose Sulfuric acid. I won't work lower without a mask. Are you here to keep people back from the cloud? I asked. I'm showing anyone who shows up how to cross the lava. Just move quickly across the great stuff on a shield that's been formed over the molten stuff. Don't stop. <laughs> Don't fall down. <laughs> It's 2,500 degrees, and if you disappear into a hole in the shield, don't worry. It'll be over fast, and life was never a sure thing anyway. An odd humored homily was even less expected than his actual presence. In front of me lay a glowing stream about 50 feet wide that was variously colored bright red, orange, yellow white or ashy gray depending on how thin the lava sheet was, whether it had stood in one place for a minute longer than rest or if a breeze had just passed over that particular stop, uh, spot. A broken trail of dark gray shield was barely maintaining itself against the hotter colors of nibbling lava. Sweat from the intense heat began running freely down my face and back. I smelled smoke from the soles of my shoes and became angry at my obsessiveness in questioning their ability to survive. Remember, don't stop, <laughs> yelled the ranger. 
And don't try crossing that ah-ah. Uh -uh. He referred to a type of newly cooled lava with a pointy, gritty surface, allegedly named for the, paint, for the pained sound one makes walking on it barefoot. It'll slow you down and give the heat more time to work on your shoes. I took a side route that required jumping onto a small gray mass surrounded by a trickle of orange lava like a rock sticking up from a creek. A quick leaping step from there led to solid ground that was actually the far bank of the lava flow. It was too hot to sit down and review the course I had followed across, so I kept walking and looked uphill at where the braided hot magma began. I was even more impressed by the eruption sheer power than before and marveled that it had ever relented enough to be crossed anywhere in the path of descent. This, the area where molten lava was actually reaching the ocean was only a few feet wide, but it held the most densely compacted scene of natural alchemy imaginable. As the glowing mass entered seawater, it created a high rolling boil that hissed in the sprays of steam with slight variations of color from white to yellow and gray. The actual point of contact was obscured by these billows, but sometimes lava could be seen underwater, still glowing red like hot iron. Bubbling, discolored ripples spread out from that spot in a 50-foot wide arc of dark tan before gradually returning to normal, deep ocean blue. The exploding sounds were much louder close up, emitted by sea-cooled pieces of lava that snapped apart as they contracted. Black cinders flew out from within the steam and dropped into the water in splashing bursts. I was experiencing the most primal collision of fire and earth and water on earth, magnified by the intense temperature of magma from the planet's core and an unlimited expanse of Pacific Ocean. My mind humbly discarded thoughts as they arose to leave itself open to the deep essence that was expressing itself. Rising into an otherwise cloudless sky, the slim line of white steam that had been the guidepost to this amazing occurrence was a sign of earth making from before the time of organic life. It was an image evoking not only the union of two universal elements, but also the creation of the other two scalding air and new earth. I knew why I felt so reverential, barely able to keep from being burned by the impulse to get closer to this ancient source of newly created land. This is how our living world began, and the process has never stopped. Rock that was unavailable as a foundation for inhabitation is freshly layered onto the coast increasing the size of the island and creating an underwater anchor for plants that will in turn attract brilliantly colored fish and provide material for beaches that will grow dune plants and eventually those from farther inshore. Right then was the beginning of part of the earth and it begins again and again, and again.